Okay, so good afternoon and again welcome uh, to the fourth and last day of the virtual training on the SDG 241. It has been a very uh, intense training, uh, we, we must admit, but I think it has been really useful for all of you uh, that you have expressly requested uh, this training uh, concentrated on, uh, on this uh, that uh, our colleague Luigi built in the past. So uh, on the first day, we have been concentrated on the theoretical part, and then we have been uh, we have seen uh, the Stata tool for all the 11 sub-indicators uh, yesterday and the day before. So today, as the last day, uh, I will present the FAO data collection questionnaire, and then we will give the floor to you, so as promised and as planned. So you will be uh, showing... Uh, 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 we have a shell screen from our colleague, uh, but first, let me, I need to have a presentation, need to do a presentation, Mr. Uh, Islam. So you can maybe stop sharing for the moment. Uh, even because uh, Aspandia will join us a little bit later today. So it's better to have this uh, discussion uh, after my presentation on the FAO data collection questionnaire. Mr. Soedul Islam, apni apni screen ta ke share karo ekta bondho korle? Hello, Shoydul Islam Shaib. I can. Apna screen share to bondo kurtaobe. Apna screen share to bondo kurtaobe. Or, you know, Stephanie, can you just, you know, do that from your side? I can stop. Yes, I can. Please do that one. Okay, I did it. I didn't want to do it on his behalf. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. That's okay. Okay. So as I was saying, uh, um, I forgot what I was saying. Okay. So maybe before before I start with my presentation, just to be sure that any one of you have any question to ask to Gianluigi, he is online today. So for the presentation he did uh, these last two days. So. If you have any question for him or any way in general, please yes. be free. So now we move a little bit uh, away from what has been said so far. And we are going to see uh, once you have collected and calculated the, all uh, the 11 some indicators, what happens? Um, so how do you report the data? to FAO. It means uh, the, data the FAO data collection question. This is how we call it. So this is really, so now I will show you how FAO gets the data on SDG 241 from the countries. So you have uh, all received uh, our first questionnaire uh, last year on 10th of August 2020. Uh, and you will soon receive another one because we will be sending this questionnaire once a year. So we are going. To, we are plan, We are planning to send this uh, uh, the next questionnaire end of July or beginning of August. So really in few days. So we have one single questionnaire that comes in Excel, and it is indeed uh, the key instrument for us to collect the data from countries. It covers all the three dimensions, of course, and all the 11 sub-indicators that we have seen uh, in these days. Uh, so I said, it is uh, sent to countries uh, once a year, even if uh, uh, we have seen that the, the, that the periodicity for the indicator 241 is three years. But sending the questionnaire once uh, a year uh, allow us to monitor the availability of data on annual basis, since you know that this is a, a brand new indicator. It helps us uh, uh, identify the changes and get the data points through the years. So considering also that often we do not get many data, many data, many data, especially now that we are at the, at the starting phases. It allows us to assess the country needs in terms of uh, capacity development. For example, this technical assistance and training uh, 
uh, that we have organized now with, uh, with you, so this virtual training. And lastly, uh, confirm the national focal point contacts, which is always a crucial information for us, so that we are in contact immediately with the appropriate person. So even this last point is very important for us. What we have done so far? Uh, we have, uh, um, sorry, I, I hear that there is someone, I need to mute, okay. I was hearing some noises on the background. So what we have done so far, uh, we have seen this already a bit on the first day with Aspandiar, but let me say again. We have tested the questionnaire in 45 countries through a pilot exercise carried out from December 19 to April 2020. Initially, the questionnaire was only in English, but we have translated it in July 2020 into three official UN languages, which are Arabic, French, and Spanish. And we have had, as I said, our first official dispatch on 10th of August 2020 to 195 countries, including Bangladesh, of course. The questionnaire has been sent to the SDG 241 focal point, to the general SDG focal point, to the head of NSO, and we have copied all the file offices and all relevant people in the, in the country. And finally, we have improved the layout following some country comments uh, that we have got uh, from this uh, first dispatch. So uh, how, uh, here it is shown how the questionnaire is organized. So it is composed by eight worksheets, three, um, Three, we have three introductory sections. So the cover page, the instructions, and the definition sheets. We have three data reporting sections, one for each dimension. And we have two supplementary information sections for metadata and for feedback. So we are going to see all these sections in detail uh, in a minute. See, this is a preview on how the question is displayed. So you can see that we have here different sheets. So you need to go, of course, through all of them one by one. So let's see in detail these eight sections. So what are they about? So the, the cover page, the first one, asks some country-specific information. So meaning also the national focal points, uh, contact details that, as I said, is a very key, uh, is key information for us for having a smooth communication with the country. Then there is the page with only instructions. So of course you don't need to fill this page, but it is needed to understand how to complete the questionnaire. And it gives also an overview of the questionnaire structure. And then it's followed by another page that explains the definition of the key concepts uh, and the terms and the international standards used in uh, the whole questionnaire. So it is very important to go through this part before, of course, filling the questionnaire. The second section is the, is the core of the questionnaire because it's where the data are requested, meaning where the countries need to fill the spaces with their data. This includes, of course, the three dimension. So the three sub indicators for the economic, the five for the environmental, and the three for the, for the social. And this is how it is displayed. So this is for the economic, for environmental, and the social. Maybe I will show you later the Excel uh, uh, itself without the presentation. The last section, as I said, uh, it's about supplementary information. So it's the metadata part, quite intuitive. It collects the metadata on country coverage, so the source of data, unit of measurements, frequency of data collection, and so on. This section helps us understanding better your data. So it's important also uh, for us, this section. And finally, the feedback sheets. It's a simple survey with 10 questions that help us understanding if some areas still need to be improved. This section has been used a lot by us last year because it was our first uh, analysis of uh, uh, what the country thought about the questionnaire. And that's the section that uh, helped us to improve the questionnaire this year. So it's slightly different from last year. 
So now let me show you how you fill uh, all the sheet, uh, hold the uh, file up pro properly. So the first page, as I said, is the cover page. It's like this one. So you need to fill these columns with the national focal point contact details. And we ask to fill this page, even if uh, this information is already uh, sent to us. So uh, if we tell us if the focal point is confirmed, or if he or she has been changed, of course. So it's important to fill, even if last year you have filled it. Anyway, about uh, Bangladesh. So these are the contact details that we have for your countries. So I, as I already said, we sent the questionnaire to the SDG focal point. So uh, for your country is uh, Mr. Hosse. We sent to the SDG 241 focal point, which uh, officially actually is missing from Bangladesh. We don't have an official communication from you on who is the SDG 241 focal point. We sent to the ad or NSO, and in our case, we have these two emails here uh, displayed. And then we copy also the general email address of the Minister of Agriculture. So as I said, you can imagine how it is crucial for us to have the good contacts uh, immediately so that we, keep, we can be in contact with the appropriate person. So uh, now I kindly ask you to inform us if you have any updated information on uh, uh, these contact details that I have here. So concerning the response rates, you can see we have two columns, 19 and 20, and Y and A N. This is because Bangladesh was part of the 45 uh, uh, pilot countries that were contacted in 19, in 2019, uh, but you, uh, you didn't uh, send us the questionnaire back. While uh, for the 2020 column, you see an Y. Uh, of course, it was uh, uh, the first real dispatch and you have answered. Uh, although you said that uh, data were not available. Anyway, uh, we know that we are still in the starting phase and for sure next year, uh, so this year you will, uh, you will send us some, some data. Let's see the data reporting sections. So you have this year two pre-filled columns with the values that the countries have provided in the 2020 dispatch. So of course, for your countries, these columns will be empty because you didn't send us any data, but that's fine. I mean, this is just for letting you know that every year the questionnaire will be structured in this way. So with the pre-filled columns, uh, with the values that the country has provided the, the year before. So in our case this year, just for your information, the 2019 columns includes data of the year 2019, while the 2018 columns include data of the year 2018 and before. Um, this is because last year we have asked to report the latest data available year. So it could be 2019, uh, sorry, could be 2018, but also could be 2017, 16, and so on. So it depends on the countries, of course. So let's say if the country has provided data uh, in the 2020 dispatch with the year 2015, that, that country will find those data in the 2018 column. Uh, next year, probably we will not have these issues, but this year we have to adjust the columns in this way. So um, anyway, please note that those columns will not have to be modified unless, of course, the country has any updated information for those years. So let's say, for example, the, the file last year, a country put provisionary data, and now they have finalized data, then, of course, they can uh, uh, modify those columns. But in all other cases, the countries need only to fill the column called the 2020. So these columns have to be filled with the values or with the percentage, follow these uh, described criteria. So referring only to the year 2020, the reference we use is the calendar year from January to December, 
and if there is no data available in your country, you insert to zero if it is not occurring but potential applicable, and you insert NA, so not available, in case it is not applicable at all. This second column that has to be filled is notes. You should insert the explanation in case the data are reported using a different national definitions, so not the ones described in the definition worksheets that we have seen before, or if the data are reported using a different reference period, so not the calendar year from January to December, and if uh, also you have added or modified the 2018 or 2019 columns. So what I was saying before. And of course, I mean, this is a, a, a free space. You can add any other relevant information that you think might be useful for us uh, while analyzing your data. So about the other sections, so as I said, the metadata is composed by a big table with all the 11 sub-indicators listed and different columns where you can specify all the metadata listed here. So as I said, type of variable, availability, unit of measurements, and so on. And the last one, the feedback section, there are, only, there are six questions with the, with the scale response from strongly agree to strongly disagree. And then you have four open-ended questions. So if the country wants to suggest something uh, more in detail, for example, or any other open comment that the country wants to do, want to say. So let me, uh, let me share the real uh, questionnaire so that you can have, uh... okay. Mm. Can you see now? Maybe I need to zoom a little bit. So very quickly, uh, so this is the cover page. You see uh, just one uh, other, uh, something I would like to say. Always please read the description that is uh, uh, displayed at the beginning of the sheets, because it, it might be, um, I mean, evident, but then sometimes we put here some very useful information for you to fill the data. Even at the bottom, you see here, then you have, for example, our contact details, so the email of our supervisor, the email of Aspandiar, and then you have, so this year you will need to send the questionnaire back by 10th of September 21. So this is the core page. The instruction, you see, as I said, all the uh, uh, general instruction and then the structure of the questionnaire is explained everything in detail here. The definition, the definition of worksheets, it goes, you see the general terms, then you have the denominator of the indicator. So it is really displayed each definition for each word that is used in the questionnaire. Then you have the economic, so all this is the dominator. Then you have the economic dimension where all this, the description and then is displayed what every single uh, word means, the net farm income, et cetera. The risk mitigation mechanisms, and then you go to environmental dimension and you have everything for all the 11 some indicators. Then we move to the economic dimension. So as I said, please read here because it's explained well what you need to have to do, how you need to fill. Here we have also put the link to the methodological document so that you can view and review again the methodology if something is not clear. And you have <coughs> Sorry, the same uh, uh, this, I mean the same interface for the environmental dimension and for the social dimension. The metadata, as I said, is a very big table with the agricultural area and then uh, so the denominator, and then you have all the eleven sub indicators, and with all the different columns uh, where we ask you to 
put this information to allow us to understand better your data. And finally, the feedback. This is uh, the funny part, let's say. So the question was addressed to the right person. The question is logical structure, definitions are clear, etc. And then you have these four open-ended questions. So this uh, will help us maybe improve again uh, next year the question. Why not? I mean, we are always um, open for discussion with countries. So that's that's all for uh, uh, for the data collection uh, uh, questionnaire that we have uh, um, built. And as I said, we will be sending to you soon. So in the next uh, the next days and the next few weeks. Oh. Okay. Thank you very much. Good afternoon and good morning to all. Uh, I am Akhtar Hassan. Can do you know everybody? I just try to uh, deliver. Uh, just uh, firstly, I okay, okay, thank you. This way, uh, our outline is introduction, objectives, and major activities, estimation methodology, regular survey, segregation data, methodology. Uh, improvement and report writing 2010 to 2020. When I, I will deliver uh, one to eight and next nine to uh, 17 deliver, uh, will deliver my show the list up. Next. This is the introduction. Introduction, Bangladesh Bureau of Strategy is a national strategical organization of the country. According to our the Statistical Act, uh, this act uh, approved our National Assembly okay, in 2013. The major national activities of the BBS to conduct national census and surveys to provide official statistics of Bangladesh. Our function of uh, BBS to collect, compile, analyze, and disseminate data as well as official statistics on social, economic, demographic, environment, and agriculture se sectors. Uh, BBS uh, mission uh, to become a world-class provider of the authentic, relevant, and timely data in holistic and user-friendly manner. And our vision, vision um, have to establish an integrated, professional, efficient, and effective NSS under the guidance and leadership of the BBS to produce and publish official statistics that meet the current and growing needs to national and international users in a transparent and timely fashion using international standards and the best statistical practice. Our objectives. Our objectives actually BBS have eight uh, wing. We are the responsible uh, to provide agriculture related data compiled that I uh, yes I want to deliver our agriculture object agriculture wing objective. So we firstly we uh, to provide production statistics of six major crops. Uh, six major crops, that means our, uh, three rice, wheat, potato, and two. And other minor crops, 140, it's a mistake, 140 minor crops, uh, which is used for calculating the G, uh, GBA for GDP and management of food and government procurement of rice, uh, export import decision making of food, agriculture extension activities uh, to provide data on crop damage. A statistics causes by natural calamities. And to provide land use and irrigation statistics, and to provide cost of production survey, uh, that to provide monthly agriculture level statistics, to provide agriculture data to national international organization, and to conduct agriculture related survey as need of the government. Our major activities, uh, major activities, uh, estimation of area production inlet of six major crops, 140 minor crops following the survey tender. Now we are, uh, we are 
imagine the cervical gland uh, cervical gland uh, uh, and then forecasting of the area and production of the uh, major crops and uh, estimation of the crop damage caused by natural calamity estimation of monthly agricultural labor preparation of annual land utilization report estimation of cost of production of major minor crops irregular surface or irregular survey contact data on forest uh, fisheries and collect data on forest and fisheries and livestock it's a secondary data we collect from our the dep uh, department uh, preparation of the publication every year we publish a year book of agriculture histories statistics uh, uh, coordination and corporate national international organization uh, Actually, actually, we are working with FO, WFPA, uh, and other related to the Eagles. Uh, and, uh, uh, and we harmonize the concept and definition as well as mathematics as per recommendation of the international organization. Uh, recently, we published a, uh, all, all uh, statistics concept and definition. We published our, our report. Then it's a estimation methodology. Estimation methodology is a production uh, area yielded. Area area we collect cluster survey and farmer interview. And uh, yield rate we uh, sampling crop cutting and also cluster for uh, uh, cluster uh, for, uh, yeah, yeah, for farmer farmer interview. Okay. The eight, we have two methodology. One is subject methodology, subjective methodology, and another is objective methodology. Then we collect data, two methods, right? Subjective methodology and objective methodology. And subjective methodology is basis on assessment of farmer interview, appraisal of the current crop condition and uh, compared to the last year uh, from the field of fish. Then objective method, uh, crop estimation are prepared on the basis of considering the, considering the total land area of the country as universe. We are uh, we excluding urban area, urban government reserve forest, uh, district area, and big rivers. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, at, uh, now we have ten thousand three four and three hundred forty eight cluster. And uh, uh, cluster is uh, is established 2009. In the previous year, in 1980, uh, cluster was 9,348. And, and then uh, in 1960, cluster was 5,753. In that period, uh, the ratio was one by 1,000. In 1980, ratio was one by 60 to five, and now uh, is a 10,000 ratio was one by five to five. But each cluster had on average uh, five acre, that means 2.02 hectares. Yeah. And every district at least uh, have 150 uh, cluster, and every union have at least one uh, cluster, we one cluster. Then, okay. estimation uh, area and yield estimation for cluster. We uh, we uh, we uh, uh, collecting the data from the cluster uh, first of uh, area and then uh, yield it. The area area for a crop cutting of the district. It's a effective area of the district. Every district have a effective area. And multiple by area ratio devoted the crop for the district. Effective area is total land area of the district subtract by area not utilization for agricultural purpose for the district. It's mean uh, government reserve forest or uh, district area or big river or urban area. Those are not cultivated agriculture purpose. 
and area ratio devoted to the crop of the district some of the area devoted a crop from the plots within the cluster for the district and divided by some of the areas of the corresponding cluster for the district we estimation methodology eh yeah. Uh, we go for subjective method, direct ob uh, observation methods, di uh, di direct observation. That means cluster are visited four times in a year. Uh, first time cluster survey, we got potato and wheat survey, uh, wheat uh, crops. And second time we uh, cluster survey, we got potato. And third time we got a house and jute. And fourth time area of the almond. We uh, calculate the uh, yield estimation. It's a subjective method. Uh, sample crop cutting. Uh, yield per acre for rice, wheat, potato, and jute estimation of the result of the sample crop cutting. Actually, uh, we used uh, 215.27 square meter. Uh, for only rice. That means is equivalent to 20 meters area crop cutting for only for rice. And other 50 meter, that means to uh, 4.6 for uh, 50 square feet, that means 4.6 for square meter uh, cutting uh, uh, for, for, uh, for uh, wheat and jute. Yes. Uh, Experience of the methodology crop cutting experience. Firstly, uh, identify the cluster having the uh, crop. Actually, we each district we uh, we cut, uh, cutting cutting the crop uh, at least uh, 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 fifty crop cutting uh, is uh, is district. So, firstly, we identify the cluster having the crop uh, rice wheat or jute. Then uh, list the farmer with the plot identity. Then we select farmer randomly. Then we select plot randomly. Then we cut the crop. Then we uh, then we conduct uh, crop cutting. Then process uh, uh, measurement of moisture and ascertain yield rate in the hard space. This is our uh, crop cutting instrument uh, for rice, and it has area is twenty meters. And its radius is 8.278 foot. It, it is it is developed. Uh, it is developed with the collaboration of FO, DE, uh, DE, Spasso, uh, Food, all uh, department will involve uh, with us uh, for developing the new crop cutting methodology and and uh, technical support with FO expert. And then uh, uh, potato crop cutting is another way, uh, way system uh, that means uh, class, uh, first they select the uh, selection of the uh, cluster, then selection of the plot, uh, then uh, choose uh, two rows randomly, and then we measurement length and height uh, of the two uh, rows, and then we calculate the area uh, of the uh, two rows, and then we harvested all potatoes and clean and wash and take in wet and then we measure, measure the yield rate. Next. Next. Uh, and uh, estimation methods in another estimation is using remote sensing technology is uh, from the uh, e and I estimation we are uh, and uh, admission data. Next. In, uh, in our regular survey, uh, that means, uh, and periodicity, uh, cluster survey is quarterly and crop estimation survey is seasonally, and crop first forecast survey two times, season based only for major crops, and crop cutting survey seasonally only for major crops. Then, and our land is survey annually, irrigation survey annually, and labor waste survey monthly and crop damage survey after digester and cost production survey seasonally only for major crops. Next. 
and our secondary source data, uh, uh, farm gate price from dam, Department of Agriculture Marketing and Fishery Studies from Department of uh, Fisheries. Actually, every year fisheries report we, we, get, <coughs> we uh, they came here and uh, they, uh, uh, to submit uh, their report and we, uh, we get, and we give them authentication for the studies report. And report sensing, uh, they, they give us report only for our, uh, our uh, amount and bureau rice. And for a strategic, uh, they, it came from forest department. Next. And methodology implement it uh, with the collaboration of the AFO, they, they develop our methodology in depth of capacity assessment analysis and analytical report of agricultural say, statistics and methodology of the sample crop cutting and uh, develop a st uh, strategic plan on agriculture and rural statistics. Uh, in four, uh, and now is our uh, report, uh, 2010 to 2020. And DPS Agriculture Wing published every year for the year book of agriculture statistics. It's the cost of production survey, which uh, it conducted 2009 and uh, 10 uh, for uh, 10 crops. Uh, uh, next cost of production survey was an 11 and 12. Uh, papaya, banana, tomato, and watermelon. And next, I, uh, the next uh, cost of production is 2013 to 15 banana, turmeric, pineapple, pumpkin, cauliflower, chili, maize, and onion, ginger. I, I conducted this survey so it again and published this report. In this uh, in depth capacity assessment report 2014. Next. And methodology on sample crop cutting published. Strategy plan on agricultural life system published. A report on private food, uh, food gain stock survey published. And 45 years of agriculture statistics for major crops, how shaman, boro, who is for the good, is published. And next, report on agricultural statistics. I conducted this survey 2018, and it has, uh, it has a, 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 a rural area survey and rural socioeconomic conditions and their uh, land ownership and their uh, uh, equipment. Uh, and their income is uh, agriculture income, non agriculture income, and market facility for uh, facilities and women and women and girl and and others are involved in this uh, study. You can be uh, <coughs> next preliminary report agriculture center to the study already published. And our uh, next agriculture uh, wing, uh, next future plan uh, sub already uh, we submitted a project proposal to the, our government for food security statistics. And we have a plan to develop our livestock and fishery statistics that is now working uh, uh, with our another uh, project, NSDS, uh, to develop our uh, uh, methodology and portionary and other skill works. And then we uh, go for the uh, preparation of the food balance sheet. Actually, in the previous year, to 2009 to 2013, we prepared a food balance sheet. Now we go for 2014 to 2020 uh, uh, food balance sheet. And now it is uh, it is under working, uh, people are sure, uh, proper, uh, of, uh, under working to submit a pro, uh, proposal to the government for agriculture area under productive and sustainable agriculture. And then and we have a plan to develop our data collection on, and uh, by uh, automation. And we're already working uh, at uh, this area. And thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Akarasan. Is there anyone who will continue next? Good afternoon, Assalamu alaikum.
Mr. Shahidul Islam, okay, carry on. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. I am Shahidul Islam from BBS. Uh, I am going to present the next part of the presentation. Okay. okay, thank you. I will present on agriculture census and agriculture sample census 2020. Uh, firstly, uh, I discuss uh, our um, agriculture census uh, conducted uh, 2019. Agriculture census held in 2019, the modular uh, approach. At the first phase, all the general information collected through short question on crops, uh, fisheries, and livestock. All the, uh, at the second phase, in the sample census, um, information collected through details questionnaire. Objective of our agriculture census 2019 to determine the taxa and related characteristics of agriculture uh, sector by providing the statistical data on data utilization tenancy in terms of leasing, cropping pattern, irrigation status, livestock, population with other characteristics area under this to provide benchmark data needed for formulating agriculture development programs for agriculture sector and other and for evaluating progress to provide basic frames of household and operational holdings for carrying out future service on crops fisheries and livestock subsector to provide statistics that will enable to observe the structural changes in agriculture, to facilitate in formulation of the necessary government policies and programs for the benefit of the rural poor. Sorry. Short questionnaire of the our agriculture census, uh, which was conducted um, in 2000. Uh, 19. Um, our uh, census questionnaire uh, uh, was uh, described, was uh, this, uh, this type. Uh, uh, shortly, we will discuss uh, our uh, short questionnaire main census um, involved uh, serial number of the household, name of the head of the household, gender, number of household members, total land area of the household, land given to others, land taken from others, total operated area, home street land, area under business center, area under forest not cultivated, um, permanent fellow, uncultivated land, temporary crop land, permanent crop land, land area of pond, nursery of trees and Plots, current fellow land, culti total cultivated land, land other under fishy culture, uh, excluding pond, land under fisheries in case, uh, commercial base farm, livestock and poultry, ownership of agriculture equipment, net permanent uh, permanent crop area, uh, net temporary crop land area. Okay. Agriculture sample census 2020. Our uh, sampling design uh, main object uh, object was um, as below. District level estimation for the three domains: crops, livestock, and fisheries. Sampling frame. Uh, census EA was considered in four categories. Uh, total year of census, 1,63,672 year, crops year, 97,820, livestock year, 42,628, fisheries year, 15,534, non-farm year, 7, 
categories are separated in measure based from the census year. There are uh, three type, uh, types frame are considered for the each district. Props frame, all props EA in district uh, was um, in the props frame. And livestock frame, all livestock EA of each district uh, was uh, in, uh, in, included in livestock frame. Fisheries frame, all fisheries here in the district. Uh, our domain, there are three major domain uh, crops here in district, livestock here in district, fisheries here in district. That is three domains for each district. Our districts. 64, that is our total domain, 64 multiplied uh, into three, uh, that is 192. Sample size, number of PUSU, 53 for each domain. Number of household, 15 for each PUSU. All EA are selected as PUSU, where total number of EA less than 53 within domain. All effective household are selected where total number of effective household less than 15. Our total number of PUSO was 9,875. Is the SDG indicators in agriculture census? Agriculture, uh, SDG uh, five indicators uh, involved in agriculture census. Uh, there are mentioned uh, this uh, indicator in the uh, scheme. Next. Our challenge. First time fisheries um, module wa ha has been included in agriculture census data capturing and processing used in ICR technology. Sampling procedure for the sample census. Next, our future plan and proposed projects, food security statistics, lifestyle and fisheries survey, preparation of food balance sheet, proportion of agriculture area under productive and sustainable agriculture. Automation of data collection, compilation and report reporting. Next, thanks to all. Uh, uh, thanks to all for kind uh, patience. Uh, and you have, do you have any question uh, to me? And I, I will try to answer. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Shwetul Islam. Uh, have you finished all of the presentation? Do you have anything less le left to present today from BBS? Yeah. Uh, next um, presentation will present um, uh, maybe uh, Mili. Mili. Okay. I okay. think you know. Let us let us have that presentation first, and then we can open the discussion for all of the presentations. And probably the questions should, should come from the FA room. Mili, can you start now? Now. Uh, Sir, uh, this is the time for uh, Saleh Madam for uh, uh, SDZ 2.4.1. Okay, Saleh uh, will, will present. Okay, okay. Saleh, you know, uh, Saleh will present. Uh, Stephanie, can you just allow Saleh to share her screen? Uh, yeah, I think everybody can share the screen. I, I didn't. Okay, uh, Saleh, okay, you may start now. Don't block anyone. <laughs> Uh, is it visible to everyone now? Yeah, we can see, but make it in our slideshow so that it's going to be. Yes, we can see it. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. 
in Bangladesh and good morning in Rome. And now uh, welcome you all to the presentation of SDG indicator 2.4.1 that we have done in uh, 2019. The letter of agreement was signed in uh, December 2018 um, by both parties, FAO and BBS. And after that, we have started our task. The objective of the uh, LOA was first uh, implementation of a cognitive test, and then there is an extended test. The objective of the Cognitive test was to test the questionnaire associated with LCG 2.4.1 in the field level to find and is from design, flow, and comprehension perspective and to assess if the question asked are fully understood. And the objective of the extended test were. Uh, was to ascertain that portions asked in the agricultural survey module are sufficient to collect the elements needed to construct the 11 sub indicators of SDG 2.4.1, test and refine the proposed criteria for the 11 sub indicators of SDG 2.4.1 on the basis of the analysis of the results and to determine the time, that is, number of hours required to administer the survey. At first, uh, I will explain about cognitive test. Uh, from uh, the beginning, we uh, the methodological proposal, field test protocol, questionnaire module, enumerators manual, all are given by FAO, and we have studied those documents and stated. And questionnaire and manual were translated in Bengali. We have uh, several virtual meetings on Skype call for an only day. And the team competition where then focal point, uh, wall supervisor, three interviewers, and three note takers. Note takers were our um, statistical officer level during the data collection. And three day long training was held in BBS before data collection by the experts from DBS and DA. The purpose is simple of 13 respondents from household and farm. The uh, for the farm survey, listing frame of agriculture census 2018 was used. Uh, you see the sample size of cognitive test, crops, livestock, and mixed three categories and also from household and non-household. So we have a uh, total 30 votes. Uh, and it was specified in the letter of agreement. Data collection took place in different hotels of my district in the end of January 2019. That editing analysis was done and findings prepared and sent to FAO. Then extended test. Extended test also we have several virtual meetings, Skype calls whenever we need any clarification or discussion. In competition for the extended test, operated test in four districts. So there were four supervisors, and under each supervisor, there were three interviewers. Uh, in total, there were two supervisors and uh, 12 interviewers. The three day long training was held
Hello, Mrs. Shaleha. We can't hear you. Oh, so she had some connectivity issues. Uh, shall we wait or someone else can take her place? Is the slide available with someone else? So, so you or she can share. Otherwise, we'll wait for some, for some time. Okay. Well, in the meantime, I was thinking, uh, I can, uh, if you don't mind, I can uh, share with you now the, the evaluation uh, for this training. So there are just a few questions uh, to let us know uh, uh, what do you think about uh, uh, this training that we have uh, uh, organized. Uh, I think so, it, is better, it, is a, it is a better idea, okay? Let us utilize the time as you propose. Uh, sorry, I didn't get you. No, you, you better continue because, you know, let us utilize the time. I was saying while waiting, she, she will yeah, come please, online please. again. Yes, yes so we can so, do that. Yes, as it goes. yes it, it takes really a few minutes. So, and I mean, you can even answer later. So for the moment, uh, I have displayed the, the question, so you should have it online. So you need to answer all the question and then you submit. Is this for only the participants, or I can also? Yeah, you can absolutely, absolutely. Your uh, all uh, opinions are important. Okay. Okay. In the meantime, I see that Mrs. Shaleha is back, so you can you can even answer later the the question as uh, as you prefer. Mrs. Shaleha, since uh, you were offline, uh, we we have launched the poll. Uh, I mean, we have launched the evaluation of the. Of the of the training, uh, just for getting uh, uh, the opinion on of everybody. Uh, so waiting that you you came online again. So, um, but you can you can continue again with your presentation. Anyway, the evaluation stays there, so you can you can answer whenever you you want. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, now we hear you. Okay, sorry for the disturbance from the internet. Um, so I was talking about the sam sample size and uh, we have taken uh, 420 samples for the operational uh, advantage, 360 from household and uh, 60 from the farm. And um, is, uh, for, for the household level, Bangladesh Bureau of uh, Statistics have IMPS design from based on uh, population and housing census 2011. Uh, we have 2012 CSUs across the country. So uh, we have first select four districts uh, randomly from the 64 districts. These districts were Jamalpur, Murul Bajar, Dinaspur, and Joshua. And um, then
the uh, slides are not no. Yes. And second stage, nine PCUs were selected systematically from uh, each district. And uh, uh, in third stage, from each PSU, we have given 30 um, households in the three categories, crops, livestock, and name categories. To identify those holdings, um, Listing of households and the selected PSUs were done before the selection of households. Of them, target population was confined by considering only agricultural crops, livestock, and mixed holdings, and the rest households became out of scope. And uh, uh, each enumerator is assigned to collect data from hardy agricultural crops, livestock, and mixed holdings. And the supervisor is deputed to monitor, supervise the data collection of the enumerators within a district. For the convenience of the operational issue, uh, I have already talked this. The total of 360 questionnaires for holdings were administered during the survey. And for the uh, farm survey, Oh, Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics has developed a list of agriculture-based farms as preparatory work uh, for conducting agriculture census 2019. The list of those agriculture-based farms is used as the sampling frame to develop the sample design for the agriculture-based farms part of the survey. Uh, the selected food seeds were selected also for the farm level. At the second stage, 15 agriculture-based farms were selected in three categories, crops, livestock, and mixed from the agriculture-based farms developed for the agriculture census 2019. Livestock and mixed farms were not separated in the list since it was not specified in the agriculture census listing. So each enumerator collects information from five farms. A total of 60 agriculture-based farms were selected for the target. And uh, FEO also provided uh, virtual support and uh, different stages of the data collection process also. Enumerators were facilitated by the local register of the PSUs engaged in vital statistics uh, in case of household questionnaires to confirm the address of the household and their local knowledge. The time and the GPS locations were taken by the interviewers using their smartphone. Uh, maximum household gears irrigation, that's why irrigation, irrigated, non-irrigated was not separated, and data set was sent to FU for further calculations of the inability sub indicators. The list of sub indicators, uh, you have seen uh, 11 sub indicators. I'm not um, uh, reading all those. You have uh, already know those sub indicators. So our uh, final analysis was uh, through a dashboard. The methodology proposes to focus on a dashboard presenting the different sub-indicators separately. The dashboard is chosen for reporting the indicator as sustainability is about finding an acceptable balance between its three dimensions. And countries can easily visualize their performance in terms of the different sustainability dimensions to understand where policy efforts can be focused. And calculation of the sub-indicators uh, have three steps. Uh, first, classification of the farm and agricultural area is managed as sustainable or non-sustainable for each sub-indicator. And two, at the national level, add up the agricultural areas of the farm by sustainability status, desirable, acceptable, and unsustainable. And see, for each sub-indicator, calculate the proportion of agricultural area that is sustainable, acceptable, and, um, and unsustainable as a percentage of total agricultural area of the country. Now, see, this is the final dashboard that was also shown us by the young lady. And, and uh, the 
percentage you can uh, show from uh, this. the first sub indicators were area situated with farm output value per hectare that is desirable 11% acceptable 18 non sustainable 71 uh, thus like i have shown the 11 sub indicators as percentage and uh, you see the most heating sub indicator on that is uh, yeah, you can show here the most limiting sub indicators here is the sub indicator number one that is with farm output value per hectare. Here we can see the red area is very high and um, desirable and acceptable uh, area is 29% only. Uh, from the above figure, it is clear that the first sub indicator farm output value per hectare is the most limiting thing. According to this criteria, it can be said that at least 29% of the country's agricultural area is sustainable. And from this, uh, although it is not a national level survey, it is a piloting, the policy brief can be. Uh, to improve the status in terms of sustainability, especially on farm output per hectare, fertilizer, pesticide management, biodiversity, etc., and agricultural marketing system can be improved to ensure proper prices of the agricultural commodity. Insurance policy in agriculture sector can be strengthened across the rural areas. Awareness program can be taken to make proper use of fertilizers and pesticides. Natural fertilizer and pest management can be encouraged to improve soil fertility. And moreover, innovation of extreme weather tolerant variety and environment friendly agriculture technology should be emphasized. So, this is uh, my last slide. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, SID and PPS. Also, the um, team, BBS team, that time works with me. Thank you all for your question sharing. If you have any queries, please. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you very much, Shalhea. Thank you for your presentation. So, um... Okay. So we have finished for the, with the presentation from BBS, right? I understood that you had two presentations. Okay, oh, Mili, probably another one is uh, remaining. Probably oh, Miss okay. Mili will share one. Okay, sorry. Mili, you uh, may share no, one. No, no, sir, sir, that's all. Uh, oh, that's all, okay, okay. You are not sharing anything. Mili, are you, are you presenting anything today? No, sir. Oh. No, sir. Okay. okay, okay, thank you very much. You know, uh, Stephania? From BB side, all the presentations are over now. Okay, then, uh, perfect. There may be some question and answer session from your side. Actually, yes. questions should come. Okay. Yes. Now, yes, floor, floor, to, floor to you. You carry on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, um, I know that also Aspandiar would like to have uh, one last presentation, but maybe Aspandiar, I give the floor to you. Thank you. Thank you, Stefania, and thank you, Ms. Shaleha and uh, other colleagues from BBS uh, who presented today. Um, well, I, I do have, uh, you know, several questions that I would like to ask. Um, however, uh, I think, you know, it's better for us to discuss it jointly, the issue that BBS may be facing in terms of compiling SDG 2.4.1. Now, as I see, you are already conducting an agriculture survey um, whereby you are collecting information on, on the area, production and yield of six major crops as well as 140 minor crops, which is, which is a good starting point. But as you remember, the scope of SDG 241 is not only crops, but it, in, it includes livestock as well. So it focuses on agriculture holdings that goes beyond those who produce crops 
to include those who produce livestock as well as the mix of both. So from this perspective, I, I think, you know, that um, um, if BBS decides, I mean, this is the decision that BBS has to take at the, at the government level. I mean, and these are not easy decisions to take, which we understand. So if you, if you decide on, um, or perhaps you engage in discussion with your, with your superiors, with your bosses, um, on you revising your agriculture, revising the scope, in fact, of your agriculture survey to include livestock uh, related production activities as well. Um, then that will be that will be one of the starting point because for the time being the agriculture survey that you have, um, you know, uh, is is cannot cannot provide information on. Uh, on, in fact, any of the sub-indicator of SG241 because all the sub-indicators, the way they are constructed, collect information not only on, on, on crops, but livestock. Secondly, um, you know, um, uh, you, you mentioned about um, um, estimation of monthly agriculture prices, right? If I'm not mistaken. So um, that kind of information is also periodically collected at a certain interval with a certain frequency. Um, now, as you know, we are making assessment uh, as for SCG 241 is concerned. So forget about the, you know, the national level estimation of agriculture production um, and area estimation. So, so let's for the time being, let's focus on how SDG two for one is 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 developed, how its methodology is designed. So we collect information through interviews from agriculture holdings. Okay, uh, we collect information on on in fact all the eleven sub indicators through a set of questions that are uh, part of uh, the survey module that we have created, which Bangladesh Testis and Mesh Shaleha presented as well. So we, we use either, either that uh, survey module as a standalone instrument in countries where no agriculture survey exists, or we recommend to countries, and by, by, by far, this is, this is always our recommendations, recommendation for countries to integrate um, the questions which are not covered in the agriculture survey from the survey questionnaire to make it okay. So let's assume for the time being that uh, you know we are concentrated on two for one. Now all the assessment, as you as you have as you have seen uh, in my first day presentation, as well as Jan Luigi Nico presented in detail the eleven sub indicators along with the status scripts. So as you saw, the information is collected through interviews using a questionnaire from Agriculture Holding. And we then use that information based on some sustainability criteria or threshold selected to assign that agriculture holding and its agriculture area. We are talking, you know, about for, for, for at this very point about um, the observational unit, which for us is agriculture holding. So we we based on the information collected assign uh, uh, statuses to the agriculture holding as well as it's agricultural land area, green, yellow, or red, or the traffic light approach. Now, once that is done, then we start aggregating the area which are classified as green, yellows, and reds, and then we then we illustrate or depict a national level picture. Okay. Now, it it's it's up to the country. I mean, if they want, they can they can they can have a picture at the district level. They can have a picture at the state or the province level. They can go to any level of details in terms of uh, administrative uh, levels, provided if they have sufficient resources and provided if they are willing to invest um, in, in precision of uh, their agriculture statistics. But that's another question. For, in, for international reporting on SC241, what we need is a national level estimates. Now, so that, that for us is the starting point. So, uh, so, 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 so keep, in, keep in mind this as well, right? So first is a scoping issue. Your agriculture survey is not covering livestock. 
as well as agriculture holding that is producing a mix of both crops and livestock. So that's the problem. So we need to we need to address that problem somehow. The second problem is that um, you know um, not all the crops, not all the crops that are covered in within your agriculture survey may be um, may be covered, right? So um, some agriculture holdings may be producing crops which uh, from the national um, uh, estimation uh, or, na or national estimates perspective may not be important, but for that agriculture holding it may very well be very important crops. So th 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 this is this is another another area that we need to look into. Then you mentioned about the cost of production um, survey, which is uh, conducted at a, you know, at an irregular, with an irregular periodicity, let me put it that way. So um, we can, we can get away with this information. Okay. So the cost of production information, though it's good to have, but it's not mandatory for estimation of SG241. Um, and I will give you the reason as to why. Uh, Joan Luigi explained to you the net farm income sub indicator, which is the second in the economic dimension. Um, which was discussed on the second day. And there, you know, it was discussed that this indicator can be compiled using two approaches, okay? One is the more sophisticated approach, okay? And the sophisticated approach needs for you to collect information not only on the production, um, on the quantity, physical quantity produced by the agriculture holding, but as well the farm gate prices of those commodities. And then, you know, um, for us to estimate the income, um, we need to have information on the cost of production. And for the cost of production, we need to have information on the inputs that are exploited during the production process to produce uh, those agriculture commodities, as well as uh, the prices of those um, the prices of those uh, inputs. You know, it could be it could be anything. It could be seed. It could be feed. Um, irrigation, electricity, you know, uh, preparing the field for cultivation, harvesting, and name it. So there are many activities which are which are pesticides, fertilizers, etc. I'm not going to go into the details. So that is a more sophisticated option. But in 241 um, survey module, as you may have seen, we are we are asking this very simple question: Were you profitable in the last three consecutive years? And then it's a subjective uh, question. Then we rely too much on the enumerator for him to explain to the respondent as to what is meant by the by by, by profit or net farm income. In any case, in any case, what I'm trying to say is that we need to now engage in in more um, you know technical discussions as to how BBS going, you know, using all this knowledge, which has been accumulated over the past, over the past five years now, uh, which have been transferred from FAO to different colleagues within BBS, how to, how to use this knowledge as a springboard, as, um, as something to leverage on to go to the next, to the next phase, okay? And the next phase for us obviously would be a decision from BBS to either integrate the the missing questions from in, within their agriculture survey or agriculture census, by the way, which I'm, I'm going to come towards uh, later on, um, for them to be able to collect this information periodically, um, you know, this point onwards. Now, one additional point that I would like to highlight is that you mentioned as part of the agriculture census 2019, that a set of SDG indicators will be collected. And I, if I, if I remember correctly, it was 1.4.2, 5.8.1, 2.3.1, 2.3.2, 2.3.2, 2.1.2. So, and, 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 and maybe I'm missing on one of the SDG indicator. Now, the information that is collected for 2.3.1 and 2.3.2, if that is the idea of, th that is the decision of the BBS, and they have already integrated those questions into their 2019 agriculture census, 
then the, the information collected there can can also be used for SG two for one, because uh, these two indicators use to a certain extent same kind of information. Plus five point eight point one is another indicator which is within the social dimension of SG two for one, which is um, secure secure tenure rights to land, and you know it exactly collect information on 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 similar lines. Plus two point one point two, which which I believe is fierce food and security experience scale again is something which is needed for two four one as well. So what I'm trying to say is that you having integrated these indicator into your agriculture uh, agriculture census means that you know a lot of work has already been done for two four one as well. Um, now you know. Uh, um you 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 need to check as to what are the aspects missing within your agriculture census primarily and how are we are you going to go about revising the scope of your agriculture survey if 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 you want to if you are willing to and improve its coverage to include livestock and other agriculture holdings for us to collect information that is useful for and that is you know something which is very much needed for as dg241 compilation if that is not the case if we don't revise or customize or tailor the agriculture survey within within bangladesh then i am afraid and uh, let me let me be very um, straight that you know um, Bangladesh still can report on on the indicator, but maybe maybe on on a very selected few sub indicators. Okay, so uh, from this perspective, in generally speaking, I would say that you know we are gonna provide you with, and that has already been provided to to the national statistical offices, including Bangladesh back in two thousand, I believe in two thousand nineteen as well. Um, which we call a stock taking exercise. So this stock taking exercise is in fact um, an Excel sheet that we have developed, which consists of the list of the variables and data items for the respective eleven sub indicators of two four one, which are which are you know and and that Excel sheet surveys the the very first starting point for a national statistical office to see as to what extent these are covered by their existing agricultural statistical system. So the way your system is, is structured now, um, you know, to what extent it's covering the needs of 241. So that, that Excel sheet um, isolates or identify all the variables and data items uh, for 241. And then you can match those and map those against what is available within your agriculture survey. This kind of exercise was, was done, you know, at, uh, you know, at a very early stage by Amir al-Islam as well. I mean, um, um, who is now supporting uh, FAO Bangladesh and DBS, of course, and he's participant to, to, this, to this meeting. Um, and, and he can be helpful in that exercise with DBS as well. So first thing first, we need to see as to what extent your agriculture system is ready for reporting on 241. If Bangladesh is ready, let's say for example, to report on only one sub indicator out of the 11. For FAO at, you know, at the headquarters level, even that is a very good step forward, okay? Um, at least we will exactly know to what extent uh, BBS is missing the data on SG241. Now you have all the capacity that uh, you wanted to build on SG241. The, the actual second step is now, you know, using that capacity, which we have transferred to you over time to start adopting and implementing SG241. So this talking, taking exercise, coming back to that, will help you first uh, you know uh, isolate the gaps in the data as it exists now then some decisions needs to be taken by the bbs 
uh, as to going forward, you know, what's the plan for integration of the different questions which are needed for um, construction of the 11th sub indicator within, within agriculture census or within agriculture survey for you to be able to col collect information, maybe not now, maybe, you know, in the next couple of years. So, so, so these were my, my broad thoughts or, you know, my broad reflections, um, you know, uh, after, after listening to, to BBS and um, after ha having, um, you know, um, um, seen these very good presentations uh, full of knowledge, um, you know, which Ms. Shaleha presented and um, uh, which, uh, um, you know, uh, Millie and, and, and other colleagues, respected colleagues presented. So we need to build on this knowledge now. Um, uh, I, I, I now give the floor to you. I mean, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Yes, Amirul would like to take the floor now. Uh, just you know, I want to add with you know, what Afsandir has just said. Uh, you know, let me just you know, tell in a, in a way that, you know, we are conducting a few uh, no, SDG trainings uh, one by one. Uh, prior to this, you know, uh, training, we have uh, had the training on 2.1.1 and 2.1.2. Now we are uh, concluding today 2.4.1. Another uh, two uh, will come very soon uh, on 2.3.1, 2.3.2, and 5.8.1. So after we, you know, completing all of these, you know, uh, trainings, BBS will have the idea about the data requirements, and finally they can and will be able to, you know, compare with the existing data sources and where there is any, any laps and gaps and how to address those issues. And as, as, per, as, as per the 2.4.1, uh, there are some surveys that can you know, uh, currently you know, answer some of the sub indicators, even agriculture census as the promise. But as you know, every three year we have to, uh, we have, to have this you know, updated information. So at, at certain point, the agriculture census will be again obsolete. We should go for another survey. And again, uh, the surveys that are conducted in uh, BBS that have uh, different objectives, you know. So their cover coverage is sometimes, you know, is different. Sometimes it is completely based on agriculture, rural area. Sometimes it is on urban area. Sometimes it is mixed. So that that kind of coverage difference is an objective difference. Also, uh, led to difference in you know sampling methodologies. So my suggestion would be uh, if BBS can plan something in future that you know one dedicated survey for 2.4.1. As you have you know, already shared the uh, questionnaires and methodologies. So if it is in place and every three years BBS can you know renew that one with new survey, that would be actually uh, best best thing. Otherwise, what BBS, BBS can do, as you as Absandia was you know, telling, every time you know, looking at the you know, current uh, data uh, surveys and their availability of, of the information, and then again uh, modifying some of the questionnaires if possible. So this is a way, but we must you know start reporting. On some of the indicators, not all. Uh, we cannot do everything, but you know, if that is available on some of the aspects, uh, say among the 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever, BBS would start, you know, uh, reporting on that. And I see the participants; almost 90% are common for all the across all the trainings that we are conducting. So, from among the participants, a small, you know, committee may be formed. Th that will be that will work to identify the laps and gaps and any suggestion if they have, they can forward it to the higher authority. And then BBS as a whole can plan and conduct new new service. This is my survey, you know, uh, you know, uh, total, you know, uh, uh, reaction. But as for the 2.4.1, I was part of the process for, you know, uh, you know, methodological development. So I have some, you know, attachment to this one. And I always feel, I always feel that BBS should, you know, devote their, themselves to just, you know, conduct the survey. And this is actually this indicator, 2.4.1, is the actually, actually, you know, black type of information. For sustainability of agriculture, so it is indication indication overall for the agriculture actually. So this indicator should be correctly and accurately and regularly collected and reported. Then that is my opinion. And as Asandhya said, that I am in Bangladesh, so whenever BBS needs my support on not only for this indicator, for other indicators, previously I was also giving some support for SDG, uh, sorry, agriculture census. Whenever BBS or FAO Bangladesh or even FAO Rome, uh, just you know needs my support, I am always there. I am always there. But the goal is to, uh, no, goal is to just to report the indicators, desired indicators that are set to BBS. I'm I'm always uh, with you to help. 
So with these words from my side, I, I say goodbye and absent here and uh, Nico and uh, Stephanie, if you have to have anything to uh, say, then we can, we can go for the conclusion of this session. So yes, Amirul, I would um, um, in fact like to add a few, a few uh, words. Uh, perhaps we have another raised hand. Uh, so Alauddin Al-Azad would like to say something. Please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nico, and thank you, Ms. Stefina, uh, Sandhir, and Professor Anul uh, for your nice uh, uh, advice and guidance. Uh, for your kind of information, for SDG 24.41, we are planning to do a standalone survey, and Salia is preparing the program, and if uh, we complete the program, then we will seek uh, approval from the, our higher authority. Now, actually, we are in busy on our uh, national uh, priority activity and population census. That's why just we are, uh, we are uh, planning after the census, we will uh, submit our program to authority uh, about uh, 2.4.1 for a standalone survey. Salah is preparing the program. And another thing from uh, Mr. Nikos, it's this, uh, we understand that uh, since uh, uh, SDG 2.3.1 and 2.3.2, we have collected some data, we can uh, try to calculate uh, uh, SDG 2.4.1 from that question here. Is it okay? Mr. Nico? Yeah, I'm here, I'm listening. Yeah, uh, well, I, I think that the I think that the final word is um, um, is on us, Fandiar, but uh, uh, in principle, uh, I would say yes. But I kindly ask us, Fandiar, to, to double, to, to go for a while. Uh, Mr. Shoydil presented as a aggregate sample census questionnaire, and we included uh, some questions uh, for SDZ indicator to calculate SDZ indicators. Yeah. And so far, and uh, we can try from 2.3.1 if we get that uh, in uh, maybe in uh, next month. We are planning to uh, trading. FO is maybe given cons consent uh, to arrange the trading in uh, maybe first or second week of August for uh, SDG 2.3.1 and 2.3.2. Uh, Professor, uh, Mr. Professor Amir is uh, coordinating this. And if we get the training, if we get the uh, direction from there, we can try. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Um, so the, the idea is to like to use these data scripts uh, and try to calculate some of the sub indicator. So yeah, I would say that's, uh, that this is great and I uh, would definitely go for it. So actually, sorry, I didn't get it. We have the plan to um, arrange a standalone survey for 2.4.1, this indicator. Um, okay, yeah, uh, I'm sorry because I have a poor connection. So perhaps it's uh, from my side that I'm kind of struggling to fully understand everything. Um, so let me clarify, you know, if you are, you know, connection is poor, yeah. let me re reiterate again. What Director Agriculture said, just said, that okay, they are planning for a, just a standalone uh, survey for 2.4.1, mm -hmm. very soon. Uh, okay. And again, you know, he was also indicating that uh, the status script that we have provided, that will be useful for the team uh, to, you know, calculate the sub-indicators. These are the, uh, you know, main, main information from- Oh, okay, okay. Okay, now I fully I fully understand. Uh, yeah, this is great. The only uh, my only recommendation is on uh, the biodiversity indicators. Uh, and yesterday, Asfandiar uh, highlighted that uh, there have been a few revisions and refinement about that indicator. Therefore, I mean, just pay attention on uh, on the biodiversity supportive practices. Uh, for the rest, I mean, it's great uh, that uh, you. Envisage to use the script okay. for the data analysis. 
and i think you know uh, you are you are right but by, by the time bbs will start at the time i think you have already updated your uh, uh, you know status key for biodiversity one so bbs can request you for yeah. that you know status key so that Absolutely. won't be a problem i think you know if you uh, if we are you know communicating to each, each other time to time okay that's great yeah thank you very much that's great and uh, for sure i will uh, i will amend the script as soon as we have new data collected Okay, I think you know uh, if uh, you know Absandia and uh, uh, Stefania, and you have anything to say, you can just you know continue, and then uh, finally I will uh, again request our agriculture, uh, director agriculture to just you know give some concluding remarks you know before we finish. No, thank you, thank you very much. I, I'm I'm really pleased that uh, you know um, Mr. Azad, the director of BBS, uh, has mentioned that they have concrete plans and concrete program to implement SDG 241 through an independent survey, through a standalone survey. So that's great because, uh, um, you know, with, with, with that standalone survey, we have produced all the, all the, you know, support documents around it. So it will be, it will be fairly straightforward for Bangladesh to, to implement that exercise. And, and mind you, they can, they can always, because Ms. Shaleha, is um, is is we have had you know very good uh, collaboration with Ms. Shaleha on the pilot tests. So she is the institutional memory as well as uh, the, the the person whom we have been collaborating with uh, BBS. Uh, um, um, so 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 basically, um, you know, uh, I think Ms. Shaleha knows uh, uh, the the survey uh, module that we have developed as well as the support documents inside out, but we are always there to, to support BBS um, in, 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 in going to the, to the next phase of implementation of SDG 241. With this, uh, what I'll do is I will share a very short presentation um, that will uh, in fact conclude the next steps from 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 our side as to what we expect from BBS in the in the next uh, two to three weeks, um, so it will it will help us structure and organize our thoughts and our actions going forward in terms of next steps. So this training was fairly fairly intense and I understand that SCG 241 is not an easy indicator. It's a compendium, it's a collection of 11 sub-indicators um, which are which cut across the three dimensions of sustainability, economic, social, and environmental. And we capture all aspects from profitability to biodiversity to decent work and food security. So having all this information you know, collected in one single framework is is not an easy not an easy job. Uh, plus, you know, it's it's not easy as well for us to communicate all the information about the conceptual and methodological basis, as well as the eleven sub indicators, and then the reporting mechanism and the processes and the data collection, etc. So in you know, encapsulating all these, uh, you know, different uh, subjects in one single training is never easy, uh, you know. So from this point of view, I, I, I uh, commend the patience and the, the interaction of the BBS colleagues and for their questions, which uh, kept us on our toes. So in terms of next, Steps. So I have clubbed these into, into two, into two uh, thoughts, okay? So first is the reporting expectations for 2021 and 2022 on SCG 241. Now, as Stefania presented in her, you know, um, session, that we are sending now periodically in August an FAO data collection questionnaire to all member states, all 195 member states. Now, if you recall, the periodicity of SDG 241 is three years, okay. However, what we do is we send this questionnaire 
you know, to countries everywhere for them to validate and revise if there are any changes in the estimates that they provided last year. Or maybe there is a country like BBS, like, like Bangladesh, um, which currently can report on one sub-indicator or maybe the next year they can report on two. And, and maybe the very next year when, you know, once we will be publishing data for international reporting and sharing it with UNSD, they may be, you know, ready to report on three or four. So it's to keep in touch with countries. Okay, it's a way to keep in touch with countries and collect updated information on the go. But mind you, we are planning on sending, you know, the information for UNSD reporting on whatever data exists with us. This is for the time being a tentative plan. It's not yet been concretized, but, you know, in 2022, we are gonna report um, um, whatever information we have received from member states, whether you know uh, some countries have, may have provided a complete dashboard, other may have provided us with one single sub indicator, but that's just fine as I was already mentioning. But we are gonna report to UNSD, that's the plan. So, so that's one thing. In the short term, uh, you know, if, 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 if in this case, Bangladesh is ready to report on a partial dashboard, even one of the 11 sub indicator, that's fine. At least it will give us uh, something to say about, uh, you know, Bangladesh in the, in the final findings to United Nations Statistical Division. In the medium to longer term, as I was mentioning in my presentation, so if you recall now, the methodology of SDG 241, the way it is structured now is around farm survey. Okay, so all information is coming from one standalone agriculture survey or the question from it integrated into the country's agriculture survey. But by and large information is coming from farm surveys or agriculture survey. So we are now on, on, on request from countries, several countries, we are now developing um, a solution around using existing or alternative data sources. Okay. And, and, and I explained that as to what do we mean by alternative data sources, as to whether we can use remote sensing, as to whether we can use other monitoring system administrative records, including agriculture census and other sources of information, maybe district studies, maybe ad hoc uh, surveys, okay, maybe some research studies, whether those can be used to report on uh, report on SG241. And I mentioned as well in my presentation that it is not an easy job because the survey scope is different, its coverage is different, its, uh, its objectives are, are different, its periodicity is different. Um, you know, so, so, so all, maybe, you know, a, a survey has all uh, these components, but maybe it doesn't have agriculture area as, uh, as um, it cannot be linked to agriculture area of the country. So, so all these issues we are we are tackling with these. We are working with with uh, international experts on us developing, you know, um, uh, these alternative sources of information. But that's something which is which is ongoing in parallel. So as soon as this is made available, we will share it with countries. Okay. Uh, in parallel. Um, uh, again, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, continuous outreach and capacity development support to, to several countries is underway right now. And this is in close coordination and collaboration with 50 by 2030 initiative, which I explained to you is the FAO, World Bank and EFAD project to support 50 lower and lower middle income country countries by 20 by 20, by 20 by 30, um, you know, so that's, that's the program. So, and then, then there were some questions as to whether Bangladesh is eligible and Bangladesh can take advantage of this program and to which I said, yes, in principle, Bangladesh is eligible. You may want to write to us. We will provide you with the credentials or contact details of the right people who are responsible for this project. And then the steering committee of that particular project will see as to as to when and um, uh, when when will Bangladesh receive uh, support on on those two projects. So we are co collaborating with these initiatives, but we are not. SG two four one team is not in direct control of this project. Okay, so there is another team which is which is uh, which is uh, handling the affairs of these programs. 
So please do write to them. You know, uh, maybe we have already provided you with the contact details. If not, we will do that. Copy us, and you can always give a reference to 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 this training in in um, in those in that request. Um, the coming back to the stream of work on alternative data sources, um, as I was mentioning, we are already working on remote sensing for some selected sub indicator of two four one. Um, from August to December, we, 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 we are expanding these efforts to include other data sources, okay, to administrative records, etc. I'm not going to go into details. So the ultimate idea is to have some sort of practical manual or draft or, or guidelines prepared on how remote sensing and other data sources can be used to report on 241. So the idea for us is because of the COVID-19 situation, it has, so we have suffered a lot like every other institution across the globe uh, in terms of, uh, you know, accomplishing our activities. So this program, which was supposed to be finalized by the end of this year is now gonna be, I, I believe is gonna be uh, completed by mid of next year. So just to be, just, just, just to tell you that, you know, we will have additional um, solutions for SG241 apart from agriculture survey uh, prepared uh, to offer to countries. Now, you know, I would, I would like to have, uh, you know, the, that discussion already took place because the esteemed director and the deputy director, Mr. Azad and Mr. Ms. Shaleha, both uh, presented their views. Um, by any case, I mean, they, if they would like to reflect further on, on these questions. Uh, the first one is as to what extent your current your country is currently ready to report on SG two four one based on current farm survey approach, which which I believe Bangladesh is is currently not because now they are envisioning uh, the standalone survey, uh, you know, in, in in the near future. Um, secondly, is to what alternative data sources do you envision that can be used to report on the eleven sub indicators of two four one? Apart from the ones that we have highlighted, if you think that there are some in Bangladesh which can readily be used, then please identify those and communicate it to us. And third is what are the constraints that inhibit your countries to report your country to report on SG two four four one in the short term? given the current state of agriculture statistical system, and how are you planning on overcoming these challenges in the medium to long term? Again, this question got answered by the, by the esteemed director that they are planning to have a program for SG241 approved. And uh, if you have uh, you know, further expectations from FAO in terms of technical support, to improve you know, reporting on, on, on this indicator. So these are, these are the four questions that, uh, that you know, we, would, we would like you to react to. Plus in terms of the next steps, we will share with you a stock taking exercise. Uh, I thought that it was already shared, but if it has not um, been shared uh, to my knowledge, then you know, basically we will share this with you please fill it in and we need one consolidated reply, one consolidated official reply from BBS um, as for the stock taking exercise is concerned. So please send it back to us. This will give us an idea as to where you stand in terms of reporting on 241 right now. And then, you know, perhaps you have already prepared an action plan because uh, uh, you have all, Ms. Shaleha is already working on this program of work on a standalone uh, survey. So if you can summarize your action in, in, in one or two pages for us and then share it with us, okay? Um, perhaps this will give us um, a very good knowledge that we can share with our superiors here with, within FAO, uh, especially with the Office of the Chief Statistician, Mr. Pietro Ginari, who is the custodian of the, of the um, uh, SDG indicators, 21 SDG indicators that FAO, FAO is responsible for, and as well as Mr. Ho Jose Rosero Moncayo, who is the director uh, ESS division. So we are gonna we are gonna share this two-page action plan with our concerned um, authorities here at FAO, and then we will see as to as to how best we can support you going forward in terms of you um, rolling out. Uh, this um, this um, 
uh, extensive um, data collection of on SDG 241 using a dedicated agriculture survey. And I stop here. So you can always write to us on, uh, on these two email addresses. Plus, um, you can always call us um, and ask us any technical, administrative, or many, maybe any other question related to, to SDG 241 in particular and SDGs in general as well, you know. So thank you very much for the for the patience and for 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 for, for the for listening. I, I just would like to add a couple of things, and that's uh, and this is just a brief brief summary, and then I'll stop. Okay. Uh, so Stefania will share with you the stock taking Excel sheet. We would need one consolidated reply from BBS, um, ideally through the office of the director. So we need one official reply. We would also need um, you to uh, share with us along with this stock taking exercise, uh, an action plan. An action plan which, you know, which we discussed very briefly is that in the meanwhile, BBS is working on this, uh, this standalone agriculture survey that will be around SG 241 to collect information on the indicator. And maybe in the longer run, then they will on a medium to long run, they will, um, you know, we get support through 50 by 2030 initiative. So something on, on, on those lines. So a couple of pages uh, along with the stock taking Excel, Excel file. Um, and I stop here and I, I thank all of you, um, the, the, the esteemed participant, the respected participants, as well as the deputy director, the director, and, um, and, and all other colleagues, um, especially uh, Amerul Islam um, and FAO Bangladesh, FAO Regional Office uh, for making this, uh, this training, uh, you know, insightful and interesting for us. Well, okay, so I will open my media. Uh... I don't know if you want to do the same to, to officially close this uh, uh, fourth uh, day of, and last of the virtual training. So as Pandyar already said, thank all of you and Amirul. Uh, please uh, uh, feel free to contact us anytime, even if you have any question, if you, since I will be sharing also the recording and you will be maybe watching again the training, if you have any question at that moment, please write us and we, we will answer and we will uh, put you in contact in case on to the, to the relevant people. And uh, we are always open for, uh, for having a, this uh, interactive uh, uh, contact with the countries. Uh, it's very important for us. So as, as Fandia already summarized the most important things, maybe I will just add again that we will be sending the question for this year in the coming uh, two to three weeks more or less. So you expect this uh, to come soon. And as he said, please report whatever you have. It's very important for us, even if you have maybe only uh, one sub indicator with partial data, it's uh, still important for us. Okay, so what about if we take one last picture since now we have 24 participants, which is uh, almost the maximum we had during this training. So if you want to open your camera, I will, uh, I will take another picture and then, um, and then we we officially close. I don't know, Gianluigi, if you want to say a few words as well, since you were more, the more, one more one important part of this training. No, yeah, just a couple of uh, uh, very quickly uh, because before I forgot to mention uh, uh, regarding the data analysis tool that in reality we have also developed a team a template which is based on the latest question. And we will be sending also this one, even though, I mean, the template, unfortunately, cannot be uh, run using uh, the data collected uh, uh, two years ago with the pilot survey in Bangladesh. But uh, I'm sure the template is fully harmonized with the latest version of the question. Uh, so this is uh, uh, just one thing that I wanted to, to mention and that, that I forgot to say before. But especially, I want to thank everybody for your kind attention, for your patience, 
and uh, especially for your stimulating and uh, somehow challenging question uh, during uh, the last two days. So yeah, thank you very much uh, for everything. It was a great experience from my side uh, and I hope uh, there will be more in the near, uh, in, the, in the next month. Yeah, thank you again. No, and just to you know, if you allow me, I will just add something with, with it. You know, uh, as we have time, we, you know, we can just you know uh, give some opportunity to tell uh, something uh, on, about this you know training, uh, because you know we have our focal point at BBS at the same time we have you know uh, focal point for SDG at BBS. We have our agriculture director, uh, so uh, let us you know uh, listen to a few, few remarks from them if we just by time permits. Now I will request our you know. Uh, uh, Mr. Alam uh, just to know briefly, just to know, share your uh, you know, views actually here. Mr. Alam Thank you. Thank you for giving me the, the floor for expressing my uh, remarks here. Uh, I would like to express my uh, thanks to especially the uh, FA colleagues, especially uh, Ms. Estefania, uh, Mr. Uh, Arbab Khan, and uh, Gian, Gianluigi. Gianluigi. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Amir Islam, and uh, he was actually very active during the four day sessions. And our colleagues from BBS has taken uh, this training very seriously, and we have learned a lot using the uh, data, how the data can be uh, analyzed. We have also understood the uh, process of collecting the data. Uh, it was really a uh, Good opportunity for us to understand the SDG particular indicator 2.441. And I would like, uh, as we discussed today, and our director, uh, Agrikal Sarwing, has uh, already mentioned that we will try to conduct a standalone survey for this 2.441 in the near future. Of course, uh, we will uh, take this initiative uh, after discussions with our director general, and it will help us uh, to work uh, as a team member. Uh, who are participating in this training. Uh, we are expecting in, in the support from the FAO for the particular standard survey in future from the FAO. Thanks again, FAO colleagues, and also thanks to uh, our 2.4.1 focal point, uh, Ms. Saleh Khatun, for uh, coordinating all these, uh, uh, the, the, all the training sessions. And it was really helpful for us as we uh, almost of a lot actually engaged uh, in uh, the different wars, but uh, it was very helpful when we have uh, got, the got the opportunity to take the staining of a uh, uh, virtual on board. Thank you, thank you everybody for uh, participating here and providing support to BBS for our capacity building. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Hussain. Now I'll request Mr. Kamrul Islam, who is the focal point of this you know, project that uh, FA Bangladesh is conducting with uh, support from FA Rome. Mr. Kamal Islam, just if you uh, share your remarks here. Uh, thank you, sir. We are almost in the club uh, end of the session for this training. Uh, I would like to thank FAO team, especially uh, this, this, Ms. Bakshi, uh, uh, Mr. Abrar Khan, and uh, Mr. Nico uh, to conduct the training program with us. I'd like to uh, thank all the officials of FAO, uh, FAO Bangladesh and FAO Room who are actually engaged uh, to organize this program. And I also like to thank uh, Dr. Amirul Islam uh, who actually organized this wonderful training program for us. Otherwise, we cannot uh, organize this program. And I also thank uh, our previous officials uh, who joined this program uh, for a long four days. Uh, and they also joined in the other program for 10 days. This is a long program. Uh, uh, I also thank our uh, director of agricultural surveying uh, DTG BBS above and DTG BBS are, who actually give us the opportunity to uh, join some kind of program. 
Uh, I hope the relationship be, between BBNs and ACO will uh, stand there with this for, for a program like this. Uh, I thank all the BBS officials and FA officials. Uh, so for such a wonderful and uh, necessary training for us. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Mr. Kamal Islam. Because we have a long way to go, we have other you know, three trainings and other two train data, data inventory trainings and other so many things for the project left until November. We will work together despite the uh, threat of COVID. Now I request our uh, Director of Agriculture, Mr. Alauddin al -Azad, who have been very kind, very you know, supportive to all of the you know, planning you know, initiatives that we are taking under this project. Mr. Alauddin al -Azad, I will request him to uh, just you know, uh, we may say a vote of thanks, actually, from BBS. Uh, thank you very much uh, for giving me the floor. Thank you, Professor Amir, uh, who is the best friend of uh, BBS, oil share of BBS, and I will say especially best friend of agriculture in of BBS. Uh, and I also thank the Stefina, Mr. Abab Khan, uh, Mr. Nico, FEO Rome team, and FEO Bangladesh team to arrange some kind of training for us. It will really helpful for us and for our team. And what we learn from this training, our team will exercise on this, uh, what uh, we acquired knowledge from you. And we will sit together and we will uh, try as soon as, our, uh, as soon as possible and as, as our best uh, to implement the um, Required knowledge, and we will try to um, make a survey on a standalone survey on SDG 2.41 indicator. And also, we are uh, we will try to uh, work for the data coming from our agriculture uh, sample census uh, uh, from 2.3.1 and 3.2 indicators uh, related to 2.3.1 indicators, and we will. Uh, to, we will try our best and our team will try our, be, uh, try our best. And I also thanks to my colleagues who actively participated and who actively uh, attend the timely in the uh, training course uh, due to their some business. And since we are in under lockdown, maybe we have uh, uh, some, 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 some problem also uh, to participate. But they all overcome all the barrier and they participate in the training and they actively participate. And I hope that uh, when we will come to office, we will sit together or we will communicate virtually uh, about our learnings. And uh, I also hope to have our collaboration in future will strengthen and we, it will continue and we will get support from FEO, uh, what uh, Professor Amir will mention about 50, 20, 30 to, uh, for helping us in the 2.41 uh, indicator to uh, work, uh, support uh, to take support from FEO. And we will try and we will talk with Mr. Uh, Mr. Alamgiri is also here. And we will talk with also our Honorable Director General. And I hope uh, you will respond um, uh, as quickly as possible. Then we can move forward uh, uh, for this indicator. And uh, we also have the next uh, two training, maybe. Uh, maybe in three. August 10th, uh, two three training. And after that, we will move forward uh, for the uh, SDG indicator data. And thank you all for giving the time and a special thanks to FEO Rome and FEO Bangladesh and also to Professor Amir uh, for his hard working and to help us. And thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, dear director. You know, uh, now just from my side, I want to say goodbye. Before uh, going to say goodbye, I just want to say that, you know, uh, the uh, effort and support that you pro uh, was provided from FA Rome, uh, Stefania and our uh, uh, Nico and my friend, actually I should say friend, we have worked together for 
uh, 2.4.1 uh, Sandir. So your uh, contribution cannot be just you know repaid by simple saying thanks actually. So we are ever grateful uh, uh, to you for your support and uh, I think this collaboration will, own, will, will never end as long as you are there in that uh, desk and BBS is reporting 2.4.1 back and forth. You have you will have communication. Uh, you know whatever uh, form it is, either data sharing or any kind of sharing information. So thank you very much, and let us keep this in the contact. And I uh, want to thank my FAO Bangladesh office because the FAO Bangladesh office was so much you know helpful and generous to support all of this one. Because in initially writing this project, I personally you know, wrote this project on, on, on uh, upon their request, and FAO Bangladesh you know negotiated with you know FAO Rome. And in this regard, I want to thank our chief statistician, Pietro. Uh, he was also inquiring about so many things. So finally, this project came into came into light. Uh, so we are enjoying uh, several, you know, in, uh, training on several indicators. Uh, this is the third in the row. Uh, another three is coming uh, within. I think you know within uh, September we'll finish all of this training. Uh, so as a whole, the capacity of the BBS on SDG reporting uh, is increasing. That I am I'm seeing. And it will be you know, evident when BBS actually start reporting those indicators. So with these few words, and also I must thank all of the participants because they are you know, all busy. There are parallel, you know, parallel, parallel, parallel national you know, activities going on there in BBS. Despite that, you know, they, are, you know, uh, they are giving their precious time. And thanks to uh, Sunday again to set this training after lunch so that you know, BBS officials can afford to uh, spend uh, consecutive three years, three hours uh, in a, in a uh, single shot. So uh, everything was very good, uh, successful for four days training. Uh, I personally have uh, renewed my knowledge on 2.4.1 after my you know visit uh, to uh, Rome. So uh, there are several changes, some some updates. So I'm now, now I'm updated as well. So with these uh, few words, thank you very much uh, for a successful uh, uh, training. And I leave my you know uh, floor to uh, three three colleagues in Rome. If you say want to say something as uh, last remarks, it's up to you. Uh, from my side, very, very, very thanks. Uh, and we are thankful, grateful, and hope to see you again. Uh, and you are welcome to Bangladesh. Whenever you get, get any chance, please visit us. See you. Very kind from your side, Amiru. Thank you very much for these nice words. Maybe one last uh, practical things from my side. Um, I have the list of participants sent at the beginning of the training. So in case uh, uh, we have other people that joined uh, uh, at the very last moment, please let them let me know so that I can add them uh, in the in the email that I will be sending uh, probably on Monday. Okay. Thank you again for really everything. And uh, from my side, uh, have a nice day and uh, see you next time. Bye bye. Nico, do you want to say anything? No, no, I was just uh, saying bye bye. Uh, follow me, Stefan. <laughs> I'm nothing. Uh... Thank you very much. Afsan, dear, it is uh, up to you just to know, uh, conclude this session from your side. So indeed, indeed, it was a pleasure having BBS again, um, you know, present uh, on a forum, which we always appreciated. So we have been collaborating with, with BBS, FAO Bangladesh. So many, many thanks to, to all of you. Um, in fact, I would like to extend in person thanks to uh, Gianluigi Nico, especially for making himself available on this very short notice. Um, uh, to Stefania, who is always uh, you know, instrumental in making these uh, trainings uh, successful. So she's not only contributing and the person who is working behind the scenes, but then you know she's listening to every single word within these trainings so that nothing is missed. Plus, she is always moderating and facilitating and collaborating. There are many activities that need to be undertaken for this training. So, so thank you very much, Stefania, for the for, for, for the for all the for all the hard work. Amirul, I mean, indeed, you are a friend, and thank you very much for all the support that you have extended. Uh, we have been coordinating to, our, to organize this training since uh, since early this year. So finally it happened. So I'm very happy for that. And we will, uh, we will come across each other on many different occasions, not only on 241, but uh, many other SDG indicators. Now that I'm wearing a hat of FMM coordinator, 
for all the 21 SDG indicators under FAO custodianship. Many thanks to um, uh, Mr. Um, uh, Alauddin Alazad, the director of BBS, uh, and Ms. Shaleha Hatun once again, and to all colleagues. So thank you very much and goodbye from my side as well. Okay, let's, let's call it a day. Thank you very much and have a, a nice and safe time due to COVID. Okay, bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you all. Kamushai, what was the question? Allah, the best of the question. Bye. 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 Bye.